Alright guys, so if y'all haven't checked out Retro Liberty yet, you really need to. Great guys, Aaron and Ricky, they do videos every week. They do the NES Pursuit, one of the best game chasing series out there. You know, the production value is very high. You guys gotta check them out. They're very funny. Uh, I really highly suggest. I don't even care if you hate this channel. Please give uh, Retro Liberty a chance. Two great guys. Amazingly funny. And they're coming up with a documentary, I think, this week or next week or some week. And, it, and it's called Why We Retro. And it's taking some of the biggest retro gamers on YouTube. Uh, Craig from Arcade Impossible's Air. Old, good old Chris. NES Complex. Gamester81. Um, a bunch, yeah, of course, Aaron and Ricky. Uh, just a bunch of the YouTube elite on there. And it's why we retro. And basically, why do you play all these, as some people call them, antiquated games? I'm, you know, you got so much better things. You got better sound, better graphics, better gameplay, better multiplayer. You got uh, Wi Fi, you know, play YouTube. I mean, you can. You can call in a air raid on your on your PlayStation now, and I mean you can get on the internet. I mean, it, and it's really crazy how. Why? I mean, why do you stick with something 8-bit? Why do you stick with th something that you can't put on a disc? You can't install on a hard drive. Why do you take up so much space? And that really, really got me thinking. And everybody had, and this is one of those questions where there's no right or wrong answer. And 99% of the people are different. Nine, almost every response you get is different. Almost two retro gamers are never going to have the same response to this. And so the, the topic in general really got me thinking. Why do I retro? Why do I, you know, take up this much space, you know, so much of my cash flow? Why do I why do I retro? Why am I retro renegade? Why am I the retro rebel? And it is really unclear for me because there's just so many different possibilities. So many reasons and Frankly, I finally narrowed it down to one. It's almost, for me, it's an escape. I mean, sure, all you have jobs and everything, but I have school. Um, I do, of course, I do YouTube, which is it's no burden to me. I'm starting a podcast, and so there's you know, academic team, church. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in my life, just like everybody else. Everybody has, I think, especially these days, very few people have more than, I'd say, a hundred hours. Well, I'd say very few people have more than 300 hours a month of disposable time. Just time to do whatever, I mean, especially with jobs running later and the guys at their families and clubs and you know eating and I'm not kind of eating or sleeping for time like this and so there and there's tons of different things people can do you, you can watch movies read books watch television listen to music play an instrument go to yard sales, swap meets, listen to the radio. There's just so many things you can do. And for me it's playing video games just like many other people. And I've always, I started out with the PlayStation 2, moved up to the PlayStation 3 and Wii. And I, I just sat down one day and after I had found 
an old NES at a yard sale. It was actually three of them stacked together. And it came with a bunch of games. And I sat down and I played a war game or Grand Theft Auto game, something like that. And there was just so much cussing, you know, so much things going on, so much shooting, so much violence, so much of everything. And then I went and, you know, it was like, you know, crap, man, I gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this, you know. Oh man, I got shot and now I'm dead. Now I can't get the hooker. Whatever. But, whatever my four year old mom was saying. I'm just kidding. It's five. Just joking. But then after that, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll test out these NES systems before I sell them. And, you know, I buy and sell stuff all the time. That's how I make most of my money, if any of you want to know how I get all my games. My parents don't buy them for me, uh, unless it's like Christmas or birthday. Um, that all comes from uh, yard sales and stuff like that, just doing that. But anyway, I sat down, and, you know, so many things have gone through my mind. I'm playing Grand Theft Auto or War Game or whatever I played. I don't even remember. It's lost in the history books. But I, then I sat down, plugged in the NES system, and I put in Super Mario Brothers. And I raged a bit from the... And I thought I would spend maybe five minutes on the game, testing it out. I ended up spending three hours playing, just playing Super Mario Brothers, the original one. And... I remember laughing, laughing a lot, you know, just having a clear head. Everything else was just out of tune, but it's just such, so relaxing for me. Uh, from going, and I was, uh, but for some people, they were go. Most people are, you know, like wow, jumping from an NES to like PlayStation Three or PlayStation Two or Xbox Three Sixty or something like that, but going from, you know, simple to very complex. But for me, it was the other way around. It was complex to simple. And I think I made the transition a lot more easily than some people because then are people having to go from simple to complex because I was used to having to do a lot of things, but now there was no, you know, plot twist. There was no you know, exciting, there was exciting things, but there was just no, like, jump out, you know, you gotta be on your toes every three seconds, you, you know, something new happening, you got, uh, thousands of people, uh, artificial intelligence around you, you know, so much is happening at one time, but, on the, like, on the NES, it, save the princess, rescue the princess, Go kill Mother Brain. Jump on these squares. Or go save your girlfriend Pauline. And it was just so amazing for me. To think, wow. This is, was the pinnacle of gaming. Nothing else really mattered. It wasn't about the. It was not about the graphics. Not about the special effects. Or, you know, not about the plot. It was about gameplay. Or can I get the high score? And then I sat down. After I played it for a while, my dad said, "Wow, oh, you must really like that. You mind if I join in?" So, popped in the player two. Played for another couple hours. Then my dad was like, I remember a bunch of games we could play. Then the NES systems that I came with a butt ton of games. And a couple of them are still in my collection today. But, you know, we I sat there and we played Legend of Zelda. And we played Cubert. And we played Maniac Mansion. We played Mark Tyson's Punch-Out. We played RC Pro M. We played just all these games and we ended up spending 
the rest of that Saturday and then most of that Sunday just playing these games and you know, him relive, reliving the nostalgia and for me experiencing these things for the first time. And so, and I fell in love with retro gaming on that day. So really my final answer on why I retro, because of the escape it gives me, not only from life, but from the craziness of today's game. I'm Retro Renegade, and I thank you for watching. Now don't forget to comment, like, and, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, at Retro Renegade, capital R, and capital R. Thank you for watching. Remember, keep it real. Keep it retro. Peace.